There are some limitations to simple RNN and gated recurrent unit helps us to overcome them. GRU is like a simpler alternative to LSTM. I have already made a video on LSTM. You can go check that out. In this video, we're going to talk about the limitations of simple RNN, how GRU helps us to overcome them. And we are also going to look into the in-depth working of GRU. So let's get started. Let's say you want to make a grammar checker which checks if the sentence is grammatically correct or not. If you read this sentence, then it says that Mr. Watson goes on a business trip every Wednesday. He always takes a flight to New York and on every trip, her wife wishes him good luck. Now, clearly, this is grammatically incorrect because it should be him here, not her. If you want to make a grammar checker, then simple RNN might not be the best option here because simple RNN struggles to perform well when dealing with long sentences. Let's see why that happens. In simple RNN, every input is passed at different timestamps. So at first time step, Mr. Watson will be passed, then goes will be passed on a business trip and so forth. And this activation A, which is also called as a hidden state sometimes, this hidden state acts like a memory context. It holds the contextual information or the valuable information that it has seen so far. For example, Mr. Watson is a subject might be a valuable information. Business trip might be a valuable information. Wednesday, which is a day could be a valuable information. So all these informations are stored in this, in a form of a matrix, right? The combination of different values that this matrix has creates this context. But the problem is that this activation A is updated at every timestamp. If you look at the equation of AT, uh, then you will realize that it's updated at every timestamp. And if you're dealing with words, then this memory context is only one dimensional and it might not be too huge, right? So it has only a very limited memory that it can hold. So what's going to happen is that after it has seen like, let's say 20 words, then this context is not going to be able to uh, remember what it has seen before. So it's very likely that Mr. Watson might have been lost when we have come here. And thus this A is like a RAM. It's like a short term memory where the value of the previous context is slowly, slowly overwritten by the new information of the sentence. So that is the limitation of simple RNN. Now, another way to prove this is by backpropagation. Now, if you have watched my previous video on backpropagation, then you would know that the del L by del W there is represented by this equation. And this is a summation from I equal to one till the timestamp. So if you expand this summation, then it looks like this. Now this term here represents the derivative of output O with respect to the activation at timestamp one. That means when we are back propagating from timestamp T to timestamp one, we have to multiply a lot of gradients and the value of this gradient is between zero to one. Whenever we multiply a lot of small numbers, which are less than one, then the resultant value becomes close to zero. Now this problem is called vanishing gradient problem. That is why simple RNN does not remember or holds the context of the information that it has seen at the beginning of this sentence when we are dealing with long sentences. That is why we need uh, something better a unit than simple RNN, which can be either LSTM or GRU. Now, if you watched my previous video on LSTM, then you would know that LSTM helps us to solve this kind of problem because LSTM has both long term and short term memory. While the GRU is the same, but instead of having two different memory states uh, in which one acts as a long term and one acts as a short term, in GRU, both the long term and short term memory are combined into one single hidden state. And thus GRU is like a lightweight version of LSTM, which takes less computational power compared to LSTM. The way GRU works is that it uses the concept of gates. It has two gates. One is called the update gate and other is called the reset gate. The update gate 
helps with retaining some information for a long period of time and thus is responsible for that long term memory in this unit while the reset gate is responsible for forgetting some information giving some more room for the new information to come in and there is a reason why it's called gates because the gates basically allow some information to pass through while restricting some more information oh, this can be better understand when we look at the equations now the equation of hidden state is a combination of gates and something called as candidate value the equation of candidate value is very similar to the equation of activation in simple rnn you know that this is the equation of activation in simple rnn what i have done is that i have concatenated these w matrices w a a and w a x into one matrix and also concatenated a t minus 1 and x into one matrix so so this equation of the candidate value is similar to the equation of the hidden state in simple rnn and this acts as a candidate value because this state is updated often with every new word so with every new word it's adding new context in its memory that's why we have this name as candidate value because it's providing new candidate information to the hidden state now let's come to update gate the update gate it is designed in a way that it holds either 0 or 1 as its value notice that the equation of hidden state has two parts and in one part we have multiplied ut and in other part we have multiplied 1 minus ut so if the update gate ut can take either only 0 or 1 as its value then only one of this unit is going to have its effect while calculating the ht if ut is equal to 0 then this value will be nullified and ht will be actually equal to ht minus 1 so this ht is not going to be updated at this time stamp because it's just equating its value with the previous time stamp and if the value of ut is equal to 1 then this will be nullified and thus it will add the candidate value in its memory state let's dive a bit more deeper into this to understand because we are dealing with matrices ut will be a matrix let's say ut is represented by this matrix and c tilde t which is our candidate value is represented by this here this black color means that it has 0 as its value and one color means that it has 1 as as its value and this blue will consider that it's providing some new information to the hidden state when we multiply these two we are going to end up with a matrix like this so this is this part of the equation if you look at the other part of the equation let's say this orange color matrix is represented by the activation that we had at the previous time stamp if ut is this then ut minus 1 will be completely opposite of this which means that this is going to have 1 as its value here and 0 as the values here if you multiply these two then we are going to end up with a matrix like this now we just basically have to add these two matrices together and we will end up with this as our ht so here you can see that some information from the previous hidden state is holded as is while we have also added some new information if we assume that these four boxes had the context of mr watson then this contextual information is still holded at the next time stamp and this process can be continued for many many time stamps as long as the network wants thus the context of mr watson will be holded in its memory for a long period of time thus giving it a capability of long term and short term memory now let's have a look at how our update gate is performing its magic the equation of update gate looks like this which is similar to the equation that we have seen before just like the equation of the activation in simple rnn with only two difference the activation function here is sigmoid and this weight matrix and bias is different the sigmoid function here is performing its magic because uh, you know that the sigmoid graph looks like this uh, what's going to happen is that most of the values are going to lie at higher end of this graph or at the lower end of this graph which means that the most of the values will be either close to 0 or will be either close to 1 and thus it's acting as a gate 
And then you will ask me, how does the update get knows what value should be zero or what value should be one, right? The answer lies in this weight matrix. Remember, we are going to train this weight matrix and after training, it will adjust its value. It's such a way that it will know what is useful context and what is not useful context. Now, it's not that the value of the update gate is going to remain constant or same throughout all the timestamps, but notice here that we also have input x here which means that the update gate values are going to change based on the input x at different timestamps by looking at every word it will know if this word is worthy to be updating or is it worthy to retain the old context it adjusts what value should be updated or what value should be retained now so far we have not talked about reset gate so let's talk about that it's not always necessary that we just want to retain the information. Sometimes you also want to forget some information. For example, if we have add another sentence to our previous sentence that Mrs. Watson, his wife loves cooking food and he is also a businesswoman. And thus clearly that the subject has changed from Mr. Watson to Mrs. Watson. And here we should have she and not he. So our reset gate helps us to forget some old information that is irrelevant, allowing more room for new information to come in. It's not always necessary that we just want to replace the subject, but sometimes let's say that if this, if our network feels that now the context of Wednesday is not becoming relevant anymore, then the reset gate can just forget this word. The equation of the reset gate is similar to the equation of the update gate, just that it uses the different weight matrices. But this reset gate is actually used in calculating the C tilde. The previous equation that I showed you for C tilde was this, but now this is changed to this equation. What we have done is that we have just added RT to HT minus one. So RT is multiplied. This is element wise multiplication with HT minus one. That's the only change that we have made in the previous equation. And the actual equation of the C tilde T becomes this. If you want to visualize it in a better way, then we can expand this term which will be represented by this, this WC matrix, which is a concatenation of these two matrices. I've just expanded them. So now we have two separate terms. Um, let's say this term is represented by this and this term is represented by this. And let's assume again that the context of Mr. Watson was hold it in this region of the matrix. So as we are multiplying RT element wise with HT minus one, RT is going to nullify these values and the resultant term will be something like this. Uh, note that this blue colored is summed with green color giving new information, but this green color is passed as is, which indicates that more emphasis is given to the input X and we have forgotten what we had here in the previous timestamp. So that's it about gated recurrent unit. In this video, we saw that simple RNN has limitations. It's not good enough with long sentences because it has only short term memory. While to overcome this, we have units like GRU and LSTM. GRU has two gates, update gate and reset gate. Update gate helps to retain some information for a long time while reset gate helps in forgetting some old information. GRU has only one hidden state, which is a combination of gates and candidate value. It has two parts and update gates is used in such a way that either of this part will have an effect in calculating HT for the next timestamp. Either I'm going to retain some information from the previous timestamp or I'm going to add some new candidate information. Equation of candidate value is very similar to the equation of the activation in simple RNN and thus this is responsible for providing new context to the hidden state. The equation of UT is also similar to this, but it has a different activation function. It is using sigmoid and because it has a sigmoid function, the majority of the values lies at either one's end or zero's end, thus acting as a gate. And the reset gate is present in the equation of candidate value, it resets some old information from the previous timestamp, allowing more room for the new information for the candidate value. I hope you found this video valuable. If so, then please do hit the like button. Also share it among your friends. Subscribe to this channel if you have not already. I know that I've, uh, I'm uploading this video after a long time, but I, am, I do plan on uploading more and more videos. 
do let me know in the comment section below what do you think about GRU and as usual I will see you in the next one.